And welcome, Hoosier fans, to another episode of the Assembly Call postgame show. As today, your IU women Hoosiers played the number two ranked North Carolina State Wolfpack, and unfortunately, in a really, really good ball game at Assembly Hall, the lady, the Hoosier, the IU lady, the IU women Hoosiers fall 66 to 58 to the number two Wolfpack. I'm your host, Jeff Marlowe, along here with Kathy Amos, and we will break it all down for you on this edition of the Assembly Call IU postgame show. And let's start this show the way we start every show, and that's with our banner moment. And I'll go first. My banner moment, unfortunately, in a loss, I'm going to go back to Alexa Golby's three-pointer in the third quarter that gave us our last lead of the game at 34-32. So I'm going to have that as my banner moment tonight for and Alexa Golby. Kathy, what about you? I'm actually going to go the other way. My banner moment was in the first half uh, with seven minutes left in the second, and we had some fantastic D from Allie Papberg, and she just really shut down um, – shut down NC State that ended up leading to a jump ball. And then they ended up having a shot clock violation. And then we ran ran the ball down and ended up with a three-pointer from Mac on the other end to get our first lead of the game. So for me, I thought that really set the tone in particular with our defense. So I, I that was a fantastic moment for me. I loved seeing that, that defense. Our banner moment today, as always, is brought to you by our friends at Home Field Apparel. Now in their fifth season of sponsoring the Assembly Call and their first as the presenting sponsor of the Back Home Network. In case you missed it, Home Field recently did a brand refresh of their IU collection and adding three new items to bring their extensive IU collection to more than 40 items. They also have vintage apparel for more than 120 colleges and universities across the country. So there truly is something for almost everyone at Home Field. All of their comfortable, high-quality shirts, sweatshirts, and hoodies. All items will be 15% off with the code HOME for first-time purchases. And remember, items are subject to sellout, and Homefield recommends ordering as early as possible so their warehouse and shipping carriers have plenty of time to get shirts to you, possibly before the holiday season ends. So go to homefieldapparel.com today and start planning ahead. Once again, the website is homefieldapparel.com and wear one for the team. All right. Now, we're going to ask Kathy, and she's known for Kathy's Corner, (laughs) and we do need to probably come up with a better one for you than Kathy's Corner. I think so. All right. Um, But just, Kathy, I'll throw it to you first here. What kind of stood out for you in the game tonight? Yeah, I think uh, if I'm going to look at the big picture of the game for me is – the lack of depth we had compared to NC State. NC State really played um, 10 people and went pretty deep and almost all of them scored uh, with four of them in double digits. And on the flip side of that, we had, we did have three ladies that got into double digits, but only uh, a couple other people scored beyond that. Um, Three others, if you count Candace Brown's two points that she had on a put back back bucket. But really, at the end of the day, um, I, I think it was just the lack of depth that hurt us. Our bench, again, just really didn't contribute a whole lot to the game. A couple of threes from Chloe um, Moore McNeil helped helped with the bench numbers and looks better there. Mm-hmm. But the eight points from your bench um, and just isn't going to get it done. And in general today, I think um, McKenzie Holmes just didn't have enough help. So for me, the big picture and my opening thoughts here is just, I think as we continue to mature as the program, which again, it's hard to uh, to keep that in mind when we've had, you know, the NIT run not too long ago and the run to the to lead eight last year, but it's it's been a long road for the women's program to get to this point. And I think it's going to take continue to take that time for us to build that depth as a program that NC State has had for a long time. So to me, that was the glaring difference in in this game. We just couldn't quite hang with them um, throughout the whole game. Yeah, and I and I think you I really like your last point there. This has been Terry Morin has done a really good job of building this program to being a nationally respected program. You and I both can remember when it wasn't quite always that way, but it's a credit to her, it's a credit to the kids she's recruited and the staff around her and to the university for finally, you know, for wanting to have the resources put into the program to make it that type of program. I I, I think for me it all kind of went back to the start. And I know everybody else like, well, there's 40 minutes in the game and I agree. But when you fall behind five to nothing, nine to four, and like I said, my banner moment, I know we had a lead in the third quarter, but when you feel like you're always struggling uphill Mm -hmm. and, and especially on a night when the offense wasn't very good, 
you're you're using so much energy at the defensive end just trying to get stops to stay in the game that I think part of that goes into your moment or your meaningful moment of of being tired. I was looking at the stats real quick as you were mentioning it. Five, our five starters all play more than 30 minutes. All five played more than 30 minutes. In fact, the, the lowest number was 32. They had three starters who played 30 or more, and their most was 35. And that was, you know, so I, I agree. Death played a role here as far as that. And I, I just think when you're using up that much energy on the defensive end to kind of stay in the game, I don't think that – I think that makes your offense harder. And I think that showed, especially toward the second half, and probably fatigue set in a little bit. Um, Anything else that's jumped out to you? The other thing I think for me were, I thought there were some nice adjustments after halftime. Uh, it seemed at least at the beginning of the third quarter, we were really going to Mackenzie Holmes, who who had a, she had a, a, a good first half. Um, no one I would say had a fantastic first half, <laughs> offensively anyway, our defense, we, we, we definitely talk about is the flip side of that, kept us in that game, I think in the first half. But I thought Coach Morin did a nice job making some adjustments to really try to get, you know, a Mac roll into the to the basket and that the girls were finding her um, yeah. I love seeing that and they really started feeding her and that that was that was something I think we seemed like we went away from but that stood out to me that it was nice to see that adjustment yeah she had nine at the half and she ended up with 15 in the second half so you're you know and, and they were doing some nice work I I really like the adjustments that coach I think she was in that mode of I'm trying I'm trying everything she could think of type mode to get something that she could find that worked the little pick and roll was working but also the issue with that, though, is because we weren't hitting anything from outside, you could kind of see North Carolina State start to pack it in again, and it made it harder for McKenzie. The one thing I would have liked to have seen there, and I was thinking about this, against Kentucky, they did a little bit of action where they put Alexa down on the baseline, either in the post or had her make a cut with McKenzie more in a high post set. And we've seen McKenzie now be able to hit that shot. So she's going to draw a defender into that area. So I think I would have liked to maybe seen a little bit of that set where you get maybe yeah. Alexa down on the line. Or, I mean, one thing I thought they mentioned on the telecast that I was a little surprised maybe they didn't try to post up an alley Pat Berg or post up Grace Berger a little bit more. But like you said, it's hard to argue with, you know, to to do that, you got to get Mackenzie Holmes out of the post. And she was having such a good night. She was. She was. And and I think also when um, Kunane, is that how you say the gal? Well, that's from, it. Yes, Kunane. I mean, she, she, she may have only had 11 points tonight, which sounds strange to say only. I, I think the big reason for that was her fouls in the first half mm. that kept her on the bench quite a bit. Otherwise, I think she would have had ended up coming close to, if not leading them and scoring. And I think it could have been a lot worse. I think that's maybe a point that why they weren't putting um, Grace or, or Allie down low. But yeah, she was, she was, uh, she was a load to handle too, down low for sure. And, and you mentioned uh, talking about her fouls in the first half for Kanane. The first couple of times she touched it, we tried to let Mac play her one on, you know, one V one and she pretty mm -hmm. much won that battle. The rest of the, then the next two or three possessions, coach Moran brought a double team yeah. and forced her to get away. And then they, kind of got out of their rhythm a little bit now and then she got into foul trouble but yeah. i thought that was a good adjustment but there were also a couple times the second quarter before she picked up second foul where they anytime we tried to go one v one with her she kind of had a, po a post move for us right. but if we doubled her and made her get it out it really kind of seemed to affect how they thought we were going to play them i wonder to a certain degree if they just thought that, that we'd be willing to let mac garter one-on-one -on -one all night and when the double came were they maybe not a little prepared yeah. for it but i i really thought that overall our defensive effort was really really good i mean we're going to talk about the stats here in a little bit but you know you can't fault the defensive effort no much. no absolutely not i mean nc state averages 80 points a game and we held them to 66 so it, it definitely wasn't um the the lost income due to our defensive <laughs> um effort or lack thereof we, it was it was definitely a good defensive game for us for sure all right. So coming up as we continue our breakdown of Indiana's loss to North Carolina State tonight, we'll point out today's meaningful moments you might have missed, and then we will go inside the numbers to highlight the most important statistical notes from the game. You're listening to the Assembly Call. Stick with us. You know, hopefully, I don't know. If, you know, I don't know if Jared will be adding any music to this. <laughs> I know. Can we start yeah, singing maybe, now? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's Ari's, you know, Ari's job is to add some music. Yeah, so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, we're back here with the assembly call IU post game show. I'm Jeff Marlowe, and here with Kathy Amos, and we're breaking down IU's loss against North Carolina State tonight. It's time for today's meaningful moment that you might have missed. And Kathy, we're going to throw it to you first for the meaningful moment. All right, um, I I think the the most meaningful moment, and I'm not sure that people might have missed it because it was actually a pretty big moment, was when we we put them into a double bonus with 6:27 left. Uh, that was a big turning point for in my mind for the game, um, and it was it was really something where um, I felt then our defense had to sag maybe a little bit more just to be a little less aggressive and we couldn't quite hang with them then the rest of the way. So that was definitely one meaningful moment. Um, I'll let you go. I had one other one I was thinking about too, but I don't want to see this. So. For me, that meaningful moment came at the end of the third quarter. After yeah. the media timeout, we had a five point lead 31 26 and they outscored us 12 to three to end the quarter and led 38 34 at the end of the third quarter. And the only bucket we had there was the mention, I, the, the bucket I had in my banner moment with Alexa Goldbase three. So I thought to me, if we could have got to the third quarter with a lead to the end of the third quarter, the lead, yeah, it changes yeah. the whole perception of the fourth quarter. But we got back into where we felt like we were having to play catch up and chase. So so that was for me that probably my most meaningful moment. I'll throw it back to you for another one. Yeah, that was my other one. Um, but the last one I'll mention again, not sure uh, if it, how, if we'd say it's one you might've missed or not, but to me, those meaningful again, coach Morin calls the timeout with two forty-eight left in the game. We're still only down four at this point. Uh, and we came back in and immediately Mac shot a three at the top of the key, missed it. And it just seemed that then the tone of the rest of the two forty. 248 that was left in the game just really didn't go in our favor. We just really struggled from there and it quickly became a nine point game. Yeah. We got back a little bit of it. But um, at that point, I was really hopeful after the timeout, we'd get some rest, get some of our legs back again. You mentioned the minutes, our starters in particular were playing. I've already mentioned the the bench just not really being that deep for us. And to me, that 248 mark, I was it was pretty pivotal to me. I thought we still had a chance to come back in and it just, we couldn't execute right out of the timeout. And from there, I thought the, the game was kind of over. Yeah. And that's one where you would like, we'll give coach Morton, you know, I'll give her benefit of the doubt that that's what they drew up since that was, you know, they came around the timeout, but I, I was a little surprised that that was the shot that was drawn yeah. up for Mac in that right. situation. Right. Uh, had it been Nikki or Allie or Grace or even Lex, I could have seen that, but, I agree, but we still had a chance even then. I might, for me, my second most meaningful moment that you may or may not have missed is uh, Allie hit a free throw to make it 53 48, and then they went down and scored and made it 55 48, and then we turned it right over into a transition yeah. layup to make it 57 48, and that was really kind of, yeah. you know, Katie barred the door, you know, right? And yeah. so, you know, from that point, it was going to be an uphill battle because you were now down to about a minute and 20 seconds to go. and you're going to have to get stopped. You're at the foul. And yeah, like you, yeah. you, your meaningful moment of putting them in the bonus so early that we were, you know, and they hit their free throws. Yes. Yeah. They're a really good free throw shooting team, aren't they? What did they end up with percentage wise? They ended up 83%, 82 and a half. Yeah. yeah. So when you shoot that kind of free throws and across the board, their whole team, and you're in that situation where every foul, they get an automatic two. So it wasn't even like the chance where, you know, you don't have a one-on-one -on -one in women's games. So as soon as they went into that, that bonus at the 627 mark, I mentioned, then every, every foul became two shots. So yeah. that, that was pretty critical and, and indeed. And that's one of those that, you know, with the quarters, when the women went to the quarters a few years, several years ago, and they went to that, as a coach, I would kind of like that because, you know, most free throw, most kids are going to at least make one out of two. So if you've got mm -hmm. a lead, you feel pretty confident that they're going to at least stretch that lead a little bit. You know, and sometimes I wonder if the men's game wouldn't be something better off with they maybe not go to the quarters, but reset the fouls every 10 minutes and, right. and go from there. But I think it does bring an element to the women's game that you've mentioned that, you know, it's tough to make a comeback when the other team's going to get two shots every time. Yeah. Yeah. Automatic. Yeah. Yeah, so so next it's time to go inside the numbers. And this segment is sponsored by the Power Rank, where our friend Ed uses data and analytics to make accurate football and college basketball predictions. He also writes an incredible March Madness guide every year, which will have a special offer for you once March rolls around. For now, if you want sports betting advice for with a PhD edge, or if you just like understanding sports at a more analytical level, you should subscribe to Ed's free newsletter. 
Go to thepowerrank.com slash AC to subscribe. That's thepowerrank.com slash AC. Okay, Kathy, let's dissect the numbers that we kind of talked, you know, kind of hinted around, but let's yep. dissect the numbers that tell the story of the game. Tell me what the first stat that jumped out to you. The first stat for me, I would say, um, gosh, there were there were three key ones really I was looking at, but the first key stat, if I were concentrating just on one, would be rebounding. Uh, the first half, we were even with them, 20 to 20. Um, but by that, that second half, it really it really went into their favor and we ended up um, getting out right rebounded 43 to 35, which um, luckily only turned into 11 second chance points for them versus 10 for us. But I, I, that one jumped out to me was because it was one of the things I was really looking for. And I saw a, a marked difference in the second half where they were, were really um, getting their offensive rebounds and, and um, even defensive and on a night where I'm sure we'll talk about our poor shooting, you know, 33 defensive rebounds for them. Um, really, really probably hurt us. Yeah, and 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 obviously, but you still gave up ten offensive rebounds. I mean, I know yep. we missed a lot of shots for them to get defensive rebounds, and and that was one of the things I kind of pointed out in the community earlier today when Jared asked what were the keys last year in the elite in the in the Sweet Sixteen game, we out rebounded them thirty five thirty one, and to me that was a huge key to that game because we, you know, they were so good, they were considered a really strong team on the glass last year. To lose by eight. In a game that you lose by eight, to me, there is a direct correlation. And so I thought that was a good one. Uh, for me, I'm going to go dive right into the shooting numbers a little bit. And IU tonight shot uh, 22 of 65, 33.8%, which that number was way up after the from the first half, where I think yeah. they shot 19% in the first half. Mackenzie yeah. Holmes was nine for 14. She hit two out of four from beyond the arc. But let's stick with the nine out of 14 total. If your last name wasn't Holmes, yeah. right, that means you shot 13 for 51. The team, the rest of the team, 25%. And to, that's just hard to overcome. And for all the effort they did defensively, it, it, it just, when you can't put the ball in the basket on a consistent basis, that really showed up in this kind of down the stretch. And maybe fatigue played a role in that, but I really felt like just the, the shooting kind of got in, you know, we just kind of couldn't get over that hump of yeah. missing shot after shot. Yeah, the fatigue, maybe uh, not from the game. I'm wondering too if there's still some residual from their their trip down the Bahamas. I, I know they they have they've had a week, not not even a week, because they had a game just down there on on a Saturday, Saturday. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in another tough game there against Miami that was you know very close and also a poor shooting game for them. Yeah. So um, this hopefully doesn't become a trend for them. But uh, you mentioned already three point shooting was not good last year for them. Um, I've heard in um, Coach Morin's um, weekly show that she has that they definitely have been concentrating on three-point shooting and, and uh, trying to improve that in practices. But boy, you didn't see it tonight. The, the Yes, so the, the field goal percentage of 33.8, but 29% from three, again, is not good, especially when you have um, McKenzie Holm as, uh, with... 50% that helped bolster that percentage for your team. Again, as you mentioned, not necessarily the person you want taking threes for your team. Um, so yeah, I, that would be the second stat. Uh, what really would have been the first one, but my for, since I was going with my keys to the game and trying to think about it, um, and then turnovers, I was another one I was I was really concentrating on just because mm. after the Miami game they had quite a few turnovers in that Miami game that's kept that between that and their shooting performance, probably closer than it needed. And they held themselves to 13 turnovers, which I think is actually pretty, pretty respectable. I was pretty happy with that. Um, and on the flip side of that, they forced 16. So they definitely won the turnover battle there and um, uh, turned those 16 turnovers into 12 points as well on, on our offensive end. So that, that helped a little bit. With yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the, the three-point shooting, they were 7 for 24 tonight, 29%. But just, you know, when you talked about um, you had McKenzie hit two, Lex hit two, and then Chloe McNeil Moore came – or Moore you – know, Chloe, yeah. Chloe, yeah. Chloe Moore Chloe McNeil. Moore McNeil. <laughs> McNeil came off the bench to hit two. So six of them came from three people. Right. Now, we didn't get we, – we, we got one from Allie. And then Nikki and Grace didn't hit any. And, and again, we also didn't have, as you mentioned earlier, the bench was there. And, and that's kind of maybe 
uh, as we go, you know, I don't have the total stats, you know, per se, but we basically only got eight points off our bench. And I think yeah. you mentioned this earlier. Um, in a game like this, even when you're only going to play eight, I guess, you know, maybe seven, you know, we played eight. So really, but only played seven, got some significant minutes. Yeah. You, you've got to get more than eight points because like you said, you know, you're trying to buy minutes here and there for a kid or two, you're, you know, at a time, but you've also got to get production from that bench. Cause when you're in a tight game like this, if you're getting production from the bench, it's easy to kind of look at McKenzie or grace and say, I can leave you there for another 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. But when you're not getting any production, you feel like, well, if I get my stars back or my starters, not starters, my starters back in, they can get going. And, right. and so it's a fine line, but I just thought, you know, the bench play tonight outside of Chloe hitting a couple threes, we really just didn't get much. Yeah. And, and again, contrasting that to NC state, they had 21 points off their bench. Now, yeah. 19 of them though, to be fair, were from diamond Johnson, um, the transfer from Rutgers, right? And who's, a, who's been a pretty big, good, pretty, pretty good big 10 player. Yes, absolutely. So I, I was actually kind of surprised that she was coming in off the bench. I was looking for her in the starting lineup and then I didn't, didn't see her. Um, so I wonder if maybe they just find her better coming off the bench and it clearly was for her tonight. Yeah. She had 19 points, um, for the game for them and, and was their, oh uh, yeah, the leading scorer. I was going to say second, but no, she was the, the leading scorer for them off the bench. So that helps bolster your bench points. <laughs> And, and that goes back to a philosophy a lot of, you know, as coaches that we have that, you know, it's not about who starts, it's about yeah. who finishes. She played 29 minutes. I mean, she yeah. played almost as much as their starters did. So yeah, more um, than but you're, a couple of them, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that was, you know, that was something to look at. Anything else in the stats you want to point out? Um, I think those are the main ones that I had written down. Turnovers, rebounds, the field goal, bench points. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, the, the bench point seems lopsided because of Diamond yeah. Johnson getting all 19 of them. But I guess to be fair, they did have the rest of their bench score too. <laughs> so, um, so I, yeah. Yeah. And maybe I was overlooking that the fact that Diamond played, you know, came off the bench as well. And you can, I was going to mention the turnovers, you know, even though it was fairly close. This was a game where, at least in that Sweet 16 game last year, and I hate to compare it, but that's what everybody was thinking about. That you yeah. know, North Carolina State was coming in tonight with a revenge mindset. They, you know, we, you know, we beat them, took them out when they were the number one seed in that region, and here we, you know, they're going to get back for it. They were going to get back, and we forced them into 17 turnovers last year, but we only had nine. So that eight, that gap of eight, also played a big role in that game. Yeah. A gap of three. Okay, I'll take it. That's a positive, but it's not like you're getting a ton of extra possessions from that, you know, that gap of, you know, that plus minus there on the turnovers. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, it was interesting to me, though, when I looked at that stat where we didn't have a bigger differential in turnovers, I, during the game, just um, how I felt about the game, as Jared say, viscerally, it didn't, it felt like a bigger gap. <laughs> I felt like we had forced more turnovers than we actually had. Um, so I was a little surprised when I wrote those down that it was what 12 to or 16 to three, the three turnover differential. Yeah. Um, maybe it was because we, maybe our defense didn't necessarily force turnovers per se, but kept them, you know, again, they, they, we didn't look at their field goal percentage. It ended up with 42%, but um, the first half was, um, I don't think it was quite that much. So I, I just felt like um, maybe it got away there at the end, but it just felt like our defense was a lot tighter than um, only a three turnover <laughs> differential is what I'm very poorly trying yeah. to say. <laughs> the first half, first half turnovers was 11 for North Carolina state seven for us. Yeah. So the second half basically became a six to five, but pretty much evened out in the second half. I thought the turnovers for us kind of came in bunches. Uh, you know, we, we would have, you know, two or three like in a row. Yeah, and and to, at times that was frustrating to me uh, uh, to watch and be like, guys, just get a you know get a shot. I know we're not shooting it great, but let's get a shot rather than a turnover. Um, and I think you talked about you know their turnovers maybe not as you thought they felt like they had more, but I thought we forced them into some really bad shots. Yes. Late clock up, late clock shots, and sometimes those are almost as good as a turnover, even though they don't officially count as a turnover. Yes, that's exactly. Thank you. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, they only shot 36% in the first half, which, um, you know, they ended up with the game at around um, 42%. So definitely uh, figured it out a little bit more. So that, that was how I felt about, especially the first half, our defense just seemed tighter than the, the turnover number itself kind of led us to believe. Yeah. So any other stat lines you want to take a look at? No, I don't think so. How about you? Well, I, one thing I want to talk here before we move on to segment three and get into game balls and hustle work, I just really wanted to call out. I mean, we've mentioned a couple times. Our defense really was pretty solid tonight. And we only gave up 66 points to the number two team in the country. We held them, as you said, to 42% shooting. Again, this is a team that had been averaging right around or a little over 80. Um, we yeah, I know we end up losing the battle on the glass, but you know we weren't just annihilated on the glass. Mm -hmm. And and like we said, we there was a large chunk of that game where, and I know we weren't scoring, but our defense to me is just really legit. And it, and it's the type of defense that will keep a team like this who may have some offensive struggles at times in games against very good teams. And even with all that offensive stuff that we talked about. The defense got them to about the, like you said, about the three minute mark at the end, still with a chance to win. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I just, I, and I guess I just really want to, you know, make sure we get something and talk about that defensive effort. And it's, yeah. it's interesting to watch them because I was really paying attention a little bit more tonight, knowing we were going to do a show, but it's interesting that it's in, that they tend to have and, and may have done this before. And I hadn't paid as much attention. They were switching basically everything one through three. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's one through four. Cause Lex, that's one thing Grace and I have talked a little bit about with on the Grace Burger show that Lex brings that ability to guard guards. She can guard a post. She she really can probably maybe not quite if she had to do it long term. As and Grace didn't say this, this is more my thought. I don't want people to think Grace said this. Um, that she might not guard a one for long stretches of time, but in a single possession where she gets switched off, she has that ability. And so it was really interesting for me to watch that tonight as we were running through our defense to see how many switches we were, you know, we yeah. really were making. Yeah, I was definitely paying a lot more attention to to the nuances to our defense. And I definitely enjoyed watching the switches, as you mentioned, but even just the health defense, I thought yes. was really, really good. You know, they'd get the ball down and someone would be driving and, and people immediately, a gal would immediately slide over and, and cut that driving lane off. And I thought that was it was it was really good. It was nice to watch that. And and Kathy and I are actually will be up front. I guess we should probably should have said this at the beginning. This is not a live show. We've recorded this on Thursday night after the game because we wanted to make sure we knew what we were doing before we put it out to the public. But you know, it's one you were talking about that, and that was you know the, the it seems like everybody's got a hand in that lane. If you really haven't watched this women's team and you want and you kind of think of yourself as an old school IU basketball fan, you need to start watching this team because yeah. they they kind of have that old school IU mentality. They're going to D you up. They're going to you know, they're not going to give you anything easy on that end. Now, normally they play a little better on the offensive end, but they're going to they, they hang their hat on that defensive end. Yep, I would agree. And just in general, I just find them really fun to watch they're mm -hmm. just a fun team and they have been for a number of years but they're they're fun like they never quit they give their all from beginning to end and even when they're tired and have played you know 38 minutes or whatever they they just don't quit and and it's a frenetic pace at times in women's basketball i find that in general uh and i i also just love the the fundamentals again we didn't see it necessarily right. tonight with the shooting but generally just the fundamentals of your ball handling and, and good defense as as there uh, a little more than you might see on the men's side. At least that's well, kind of the, game my play, the game. The game is played below the rim for the women generally. Yeah. And so they the fundamentals, yeah. And so the fundamentals, as you mentioned, have to be a little bit more solid at times because they can't get away with a pure athleticism of throw it up and let somebody go right. get it. Yeah. Um, but I, I really liked what you're talking about offensively too. And I really paid more attention to this kind of part of tonight. It was how many times they were able to get in the lane, either off a dribble, off a pass, but they were able to get in the lane and that got them some good looks. Looks, you know, one thing you know we didn't talk about maybe with the numbers, but Nicole Cardano Hillary, who is a 2,000 point scorer, went 0 for 10 tonight. 
that's not something that's going to likely right. happen again to her this year. And unfortunately it happened tonight, yeah. but there were a couple, three times where she spotted up on that weak side where either Grace or Allie or even Lex dribbled into the lane. Everybody converged on them and th they kicked it out to her. She just couldn't get it to go down. Yeah. And, and it's really fun. Like you said, it's fun to watch them. I, I was really looking for the crowd numbers. I was looking for the attendance. The crowd sounded awesome tonight. Yeah. And I, and that's awesome that we can get people in a lot of people on their watch. I really was interested in what the attendance numbers were, but I didn't see it before we started the show. So, but I'd yeah, like to think I we had, I'd like to think we had more than a few thousand. I'd like to think we had eight, 9,000, but I'd like to see the official right. numbers. I would too. I, I had commented also in our private community about that. The other thing I was actually, I didn't listen to the TV commentators. I listened to the IU um, color or play by way. I guess he does both because it's only one person for the women. Um, but I was listening that I, I sync them up through the tune tune in app because yeah. <laughs> um, I don't want to listen to the commentators 90% of the time. So I was listening to him, but he made a comment during, you know, one of the stoppages in play and the crowd was really getting into it. And he goes, Oh, this is great to see. I think that that's the entire men's basketball team in the front row getting the entire student section um, pumped up. And that made me really happy to hear because uh, I knew at, at halftime or one of the timeouts, I think it was halftime, he mentioned as well TJD walking across the floor and everyone getting excited for him. And then it turned out it was most of the, the game. So I love to see that support between all of our programs as well. And yeah, I know they went a lot of football games too, but that, that made me very happy to hear that as well. Yeah, and and that's awesome because that's one of the things that Grace I asked Grace about in one of the episodes that you know they you uh -huh. know that they go to the men's games they go to the football games they really feel like they that all the other sports come to watch them too and that you know that whole idea you know twenty four sports one team yeah. mentality really is it's more than just a slogan for for them and I, and that's and I think that's great um, I wish the camera would have caught some of that and seen some of the other, to show that that those guys were there supporting them knowing that it was a big game for them and and yeah. and to be there for them so um anything else kathy no uh, this, I, i'm glad you brought up the crowd because that was that was going to be something i was going to bring up definitely at the end i was super happy to hear <laughs> hear the crowd like not because I've, I've watched other women's games too and you know they don't always get the attendance that uh that they would want or deserve and in this case i thought the student section in particular really showed out i thought the the student section looked packed and i that that made me very happy to hear and i'm i hope they continue to get that support all year not just uh if they're playing you know a top top 10 team. <laughs> so good for them. I agree. So we have coming up on the assembly call, we hand out our game balls and who's your hustle award. Then we introduce, or excuse me. And so we'll be looking ahead to India's next opponent. That's all next here on the assembly call. Stick with us. Music. music, music. <laughs> <laughs> I almost forgot. I forgot who, who do we have coming up next? Uh, Penn State, I think. Yeah. Penn State. Start big ten play. Start big ten play. All right. So you're listening to the Assembly Call IU Post Game Show. Catch us live immediately following every IU basketball game. Hopefully, we'll be doing live shows in the future. All right. Plus, every Thursday night, you can also listen to Assembly Call Radio as well. And that at our and that can all be found at our website, assemblycall.com, or you can follow the AC Radio Show live on the Assembly Call YouTube channel. Join for free today at join.assemblycall.com. That's join.assemblycall.com. I'm Jeff Marlowe. She's Kathy Amos, and we are breaking down Indiana's loss to the number two North Carolina State Wolfpack tonight, 66 to 58. And it's time for our game balls. And Kathy, I'm going to go to you first. Well, I think this one's an easy one. I'm going with Mackenzie Holmes. That I, 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 at first, it was interesting. I was, my husband was watching the game with me, and I'm watching the first half, and I'm like, you know, that just seems, you know, they're all kind of off, but they're all kind of balanced in how they're off, and they're all playing great defense together. I'm going to have trouble with my my game ball, I think. And then that second half, she just came over, and I thought she really um, asserted herself and ended up with 24 points. And um, how many rebounds did she end up with? Oh, yeah. four. Okay. I thought there was a lot more. Than, again, this really felt like a lot more than four, but yeah, fantastic. Um, fantastic effort from, from McKenzie. And I loved her energy too. Like every time a, a great play would happen, even from one of her teammates, you could see her just really cheering and encouraging everyone. So for me, McKenzie Holmes gets the game ball. And, and I'm going to go with McKenzie too, obviously 20, like you said, 24 points. I, they only had her for one block. It seemed like again, yeah. this early, it seemed like she had four or five. Yeah. Know? 
Yeah, how much money I've won? I, I don't know who's doing the stats. Who's doing the official stats? They, they need to get me down to Bloomington so I can keep the stats because you had to have four or five. I'll just they make only them up. had us with three total. So it yeah, yeah. Really and, and, and Mackenzie had to have three at least by herself. Uh, and and uh, let's really, again, for a lot of the fans who haven't paid much attention, this is a kid who's really worked to get herself in you know, fantastic shape so she can play longer, get up and down the floor a little better. And so it, you can really see it in a game like tonight where that, you know, her game has really gone to kind of even a better level than it was last year. And so, you know, and then also her brother is part of the practice team. The, they have a group of guys and men who come in and practice against them, and he's part of that practice team. Yeah. So and that's, that's got to be a that's got to be a great family dynamic there for the Holmeses. And and I agree for you, Mackenzie Holmes is our our game ball winner tonight. So she'll be our first ever for him. <laughs> assembly call IU Women's Post Game Show game ball winner. Uh, and now it's time for the Hoosier Hustle Award. Sponsored by our friends at Evans, Evansville Security Services, Evansville Security Services provides off-duty police officers to businesses and individuals throughout Indiana. Remember, prevention cannot be measured, so let Evansville Security Services help you prevent a bad outcome today. Go to EvansvilleSecurityServices.com to learn more. That's EvansvilleSecurityServices.com. And Kathy, I'll let you go first tonight on the Hustle Award. Boy, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm struggling with this one. I I really I really am. I I, uh, I mentioned it again in my opening thoughts. I just didn't think that McKenzie got a lot of help from the rest of her teammates. You can look at we can look at the stat score our stat sheet here, and we can look at the line. We have ten points for Allie, ten points for Grace, um, in nine rebounds for Grace, and then five rebounds for Allie. I thought Allie's defense was just on point tonight. So looking past the stat line, there's Allie. Um, but I, I think at the end of the day, I, I'm going to end up giving it to Grace because she did end up with 10 points. Those nine rebounds were great. But what really swung me towards her was the five assists that she had. So, and I am quite sure that a number of those assists were down to McKinsey. So McKinsey probably doesn't get all of her 24 points without the, the heads up plays from Grace to be able to assist and get her to the ball. Um, there was definitely, it was definitely not her best game tonight from a, a overall perspective, but from a team perspective, I think she was there for her teammates. She played 34 minutes and, um, oh, she had a few turnovers too, that were probably a little, um, uncharacteristic that we wouldn't want to see from her, but, and I thought her defense was, was pretty good as well. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and give my hustle award to Grace. And uh, I'm actually going to go that way as well. I was like you. I really was struggling with which person I was going to go with until I kind of really did look, like you look at the stat line because the eye test for me, I was kind of leaning toward Lex. I, I, you know, I thought Lex had played pretty well. She'd hit a couple shots and and I felt like she was rebounding. I felt like she was mm -hmm. playing good D. I thought she had a couple, three, you know, three or four assists. Um, they again only had her officially with one assist yeah. and three rebounds. So again, I must have been watching a totally different game because I thought Lex was playing pretty well. But I'm going to go with, I, I'm like you. I think the rebounds and the assists, especially put grace just kind of a little bit ahead here on the hustle award and you know that with grace and they all get really i should say just grace they they all are going to give you everything they got yeah. well with yeah. this team sometimes maybe picking out the hustle award will be one of our harder picks every game because you know there's so many of them doing that role but I, I, I'm with you, the 10 points, the nine rebounds, the five assists, and and I'm not always the biggest plus minus person, but she was a zero on plus minus. So she really, and that was the best on the team, but nobody yes. else was, it, <laughs> nobody else was a positive. Yeah, so everyone else was negative. <laughs> everybody else was at least a negative one. Yeah. And I was even surprised, like Mac was a minus five. Yeah, uh, I thought that too. That's and, 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 and again, I thought Lex played pretty well, but Lex was a minus nine. Right. She yeah. had the worst, or no, let's take it back. Okay. And Allie was minus 14. So I'm going to go with Grace for the, the Hustle Award. Yeah, good. Well, it's a good thing that we agreed because we have no one here to break the tie. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have a chat mob to help us break the tie if we get to that point. You know, I guess that's our incentive maybe to go try it live on Monday and see. <laughs> there we go. We need to get to a live show. Or or maybe we got to start inviting a guest in at some point, right. too, so we can just have three people. But, I, by the way, for people who don't know, Kathy and I just kind of got this going, you know, on, on a – not a whim, but it, it just kind of, you know, we've been – battering back and forth for a while about trying to get this going. And then when they announced the back home network, we were kind of like, Hey, 
yeah. let's try this and see what we can get going and and do this. So those were our that's our Hoosier our game ball tonight to Mackenzie Holmes. Our Hoosier Hustle Award goes to Grace Berger. Before we go to segment three, kind of any anything else here, any lingering questions you may have about or lingering thoughts that you might have about this team right now? I think uh, the lingering thought or question would be, can they get their shooting back? We have Big Ten play starting on Monday, and uh, the the field goal percentage that they had tonight of 33.8% is probably not going – it's just not going to cut it, especially if you want to compete with the likes of Iowa and Maryland. They're just too good of teams – um, as we saw the same from NC State that we're going to be able to come out and shoot. Um, the other thing I want to, my other lingering question is on the positive side, I want to continue seeing the defense, right? Mm. So on the flip side of that, my the positive is the defense. Um, those are my two lingering kind of dichotomies here for me. The negative that they really need to make sure they focus on is improving that field goal shooting percentage positive. You got to keep that strong defense effort going on. And I'll kind of go the same route. I think that's a good way to approach this, but both from a negative and maybe a positive. Uh, for me, I, it's not so much the shooting in general. It's the three-point shooting. It was a, it was an yeah. issue for them last year, and I know they worked on it over the summer. And obviously, Mac can make a couple now. Um, but they only hit 29% tonight from three. Um, kind of the same thing we talked about with the men in, in some of the post-game shows, that if they can just get to 35%, with mm -hmm. their offense inside, with Grace's mid-range game, Allie's ability to get to the rim, Lex's ability to kind of do some of that dirty work, and then McKenzie just being a, an outstanding post player, they're going to score. But they've got they they got to find a way to get, in my opinion, they got to find a way to get to 36 percent, and they don't have to shoot a ton. You know, they shot twenty four tonight. Right. Which that might have been maybe a few too many. But yeah. if, you know, if they can get a way to get to like eight for 19, seven, you know, seven for, for 19, something like that, then I think they've got a chance to really, you know, that really makes their offense just look that much better to be more efficient for me kind of the positive. I just like, I, I just like the way they move the ball and, and, and mm -hmm. you talked about the defense, but for me, it's on the offensive end as well. I, I, and I think it'll continue to be a positive that they, the way they move the ball, when they can, when they can get the ball from side to side, either with the pass or a dribble, they, they really do get a lot of good looks and that you can tell that they're five kids, especially the starters who have played a ton of basketball together and they know where they're going to be and they know how to get the ball to people generally they had some turnovers i'm not trying to make it sound like yeah. they had none but they generally know where each other are going to be they know where kids that each other like the ball and i just love to watch that offense when they move the ball and pass and, and both move the ball and move themselves yeah i agree with that their spacing is just so nice to watch on offense so i and i'm glad you addressed the number of uh, the three-point shooting because i was one question i wanted to ask you did you feel that the 24 was just too many especially the way they were shooting at tonight it, it felt like that might have been too many and i i don't know do you have any numbers on what they have historically shot number wise i don't have that i'll try and go back and look at some of that over the weekend as we get ready for monday just in case we get yeah. into this conversation again on monday with penn state but it, it wasn't so much if you look at how you break down the stats ali only shot four um mckenzie shot four and chloe shot four so there's 12 of their 24 was out of those three uh, Grace only had one. Now Lex shot five. I thought maybe a couple of hers were rushed, maybe, but that. that but I, again, I, I, that's. I think that's Lex's role. She's got to be able to step out and hit one or two. But the key number here, it goes back to Nikki. Nikki was zero for six. If Nikki's one for six, if Nikki's two for six, that whole you know, all of a sudden now you're eight for twenty four or nine for twenty four, and that percentage looks about where I would like to see it be around thirty four. So. It wasn't any one kid. I get what you. I, I really get what you're saying. But mm -hmm. in a game like tonight, I thought it got to the point there a little bit. Well, didn't you feel? Did you feel in the first half? I thought there was a time there where they almost looked afraid to shoot, where yeah. they were they were almost overpassing. Mm -hmm. Okay, here I found, um, and I'm not sure if this is updated, but combined team statistics in terms of three point shooting, it looks like they're shooting 35.6 on the year. Well, that's good. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, Mackenzie, 57% of it, but she's taken seven. She's four of seven. So it was, so I, I think this was updated. 
because it says it's as of December 3rd. So <laughs> which is if that's tomorrow. update, if that's that updated, seems... then that's even, you know, that's with a 29% performance in the night. Right. I, I might be trying, like I said, I might try to go back and look at the game by game rather right. than the total combination. See yeah. if, you know, I think Nikki had that game against Butler. I don't think they shot yeah. a ton and she really shot it well. You lot it, lit it up. Yeah. I mean, and so again, like, Chalking this up to being a, an anomaly for Nikki, her number is right. on the year, 44.8%. So if you if this really does include her tonight, she was shooting well north of 45% before yeah. tonight. On probably three, close on to 50, points. right. Yeah. Probably yeah. close to 50. So definitely uncharacteristic. So hopefully this was just an anomaly and a, I don't know, a speed bump for her that uh, she'll get over here come Monday. So. When we come back, we'll preview the upcoming game against Penn State on Monday, and we'll also talk about any other last last thoughts that we have for tonight. You're listening to the Assembly Call postgame show, the IU women losing to North Carolina State, 66 to 58. You're listening to the Assembly Call IU postgame show. Remember to check out our friends at Home Field Apparel. Use the promo code HOME at checkout to get 15% off your first order. Okay, it's time for last call. Kathy? Yeah, I think this was a fun game to watch. I, I, I hope that there was a lot of people that tuned in to the game, a nationally televised game on ESPN2, and it was just a really fun game to watch. It, it was it was hard to watch with the, the shooting, and it was amazing to watch with the defense. Just all in general, it was really it, it just it was fun to quote Andy. It was fun. It was a fun game. <laughs> I, I just love their tenacity. I love, like you said, their togetherness. They clearly have a team of chemistry that uh, you don't always see on the floor together. And I'm excited to continue watching them all year. And you never know, maybe this ends up being another game that we see as a rematch come March. Yeah. Uh, and I think that I, I think, you know, and, and for those people who have not been in our community yet, we really want you to join at assemblycall.com, join our community. But Eric, I pointed out, it'd be nice to see this almost be a final four game, yeah. you know, see these two teams again in the final four. And and we do play Penn State on Monday. Uh, I don't know a ton about Penn State. I know they've struggled the last few years in the conference. Uh, so obviously it's a game we want to try. If we're, if we are going to be where we want to be, if the, I, I, if the IU women are want to be one or two in the conference they really want to be number one and we want them to be a big 10 champion they've got a, to me this is a, almost a must win even on the road it becomes a, a, a must win but this game i believe is at home yeah so it, it really becomes kind of a must win in the league to get started off not only one and oh but you really you want to be kind of beating those teams that are probably going to be toward the bottom of the league yeah, and, and soundly too. So hopefully maybe we can use this as a game to get some of our, our starters a rest. <laughs> um, you know, they're, they we just really do rely on them so, so very much. Uh, we have to be able to find games where we can get a very large lead that our bench can come in and um, let those starters sit down and, and have a break. And and the good thing, too, is this game for, again, our plug for people to start watching our women play. It's on Big Ten Network, not Big Ten Plus this time. Yes. So Big Ten Network. So here's your chance on Monday. It's at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, hopefully it's, early. Be, it's very early, early for you and I on Central Time. <laughs> Double checking that. Yeah. 6 p.m. Good, Eastern. Good thing. Good, good thing we don't want to have Ryan on the post game show. It'd be like two o'clock his time out in, in San Diego. Um, and we, we may have to haul him in here one night for a, for a women's post game show and see how, see if we can get him on a rant about, you know, for one of their games. Um, I, and like I said, I just think that it's important for him to win at home to, and to beat a team that's kind of picked to be toward the bottom of the league. And, and, and from that standpoint, because like you said, you know, Maryland, you know, Iowa, Michigan are going to be tough games. Yeah. And and so that's Minnesota. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Minnesota, Ohio State even has given them some fits. Yeah. In the, in Although the last they few just years. lost the Syracuse last yes. night. So <laughs> and from that standpoint, for me, I guess my closing statement would be just I, I'm so excited to be doing this show with you. I'm so excited to Jared and all the people at Assembly Call and back home network who have given us the green light and so thank you to you guys and everybody I want to thank everybody in the community hopefully is watching this we'll be trying to do this live here in the near future but <laughs> I, i'm just really excited about this opportunity glad like i said to be doing it with you but i just want people to realize like you said 
they're on BTN. They're on ESPN. I think they've got a couple of games in January, maybe one or I think one where they're on FS1. I mean, they're getting some nationally televised games. And, you know, this used to be that was only going to be your big, big, big name programs, the Notre Dames, the Yukons, the Baylors. And IU women are getting some national televised recognition, you know, they're, and they're not and they're not hurting themselves when they get on national TV right. there. And, and, and that can only help recruiting it can only help build the brand on down the road so i just hope the fans who haven't been watching them and, and you kind of see this because they are assembly called members hey start watching these ladies they they play a fun brand of basketball i know they lost tonight but they they play a fun brand of basketball that i think a lot of hoosier fans will like watching yeah 100 percent agree with everything you said <laughs> and then some <laughs> all right anything else no i think that wraps it up for me and that will do it for us here on the assembly call iu women's post game show again a disappointing loss tonight north carolina number two ranked north carolina state wolfpack 66 the number six ranked indiana hoosiers 58 the, the indiana hoosiers dropped to i had the record written down what i do with it uh They'd lost one game, right? Yeah, they. I believe this makes them, yes, five and two. I'm sorry, five and two. So it dropped to five and two, and they start Big Ten play on Monday. If you want to see us hopefully do a live show in the future, be a part of the live chat, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash assemblycall.com. And hopefully Kathy and I will get this figured out and be able to be better than we I I'm nervous. I don't know about anybody else. And don't forget to join assemblycall.com to join our free email newsletter. And thank you for listening and watching. We'll be back to talk IU hoops again with you on Monday night. And then also we want to remind you there will be an IU men's post game show on Saturday after the Nebraska game. And then we'll be back on hopefully we, and I think Kathy and I are leaning toward live on Monday. We'll see, we'll uh, but we're going to do another one after the IU Penn state game on Monday. And don't forget every Thursday night when there's not a game assembly call radio at 9 PM Eastern eight o'clock central. And again, you can see all that at the youtube.com assembly call uh, page as well and join the chat mob. For Kathy Amos, I'm Jeff Marlowe. Thank you for joining us tonight. Until Monday, go Hoosiers. And keep your elbows in and your eyes on the rim. Woo! <laughs>